Okay, here we are for the first round. We lost the die roll, but a lot of times that means that we get what we wanted anyway. And it looks like that's what it means in this case as well, which is to be on the draw. We'll keep this hand. We've got um, we've got an essence scatter and a and a three drop, so things are probably pretty good for us here. Uh, sure. There's not a ton of two drops that our opponent can play that we're just super frightened by, like Young Pyromancer. There, there's a few, but generally speaking, which is one of the hallmarks of this format, is that we just kind of don't care what they do on turn two that much. We, we'll have answers to it, and and we just won't mind. Turn three is much different. He can have Master of Diversion, which is a big problem. A Warden of Evos Isle. Yeah, that's probably worth a counter. It's not a big issue for the deck, but it, it is not something that we all, we want him to just go off the next turn and start playing Sarah Angels or whatever. So we'll just stunt his growth here a bit. Okay, and uh, no reason to uh, to get cute. We'll just run out the old Blood Baron here and uh, pass the turn back. Now we're just going to look to curve out on him here and hope that our Death Gaze, Cockatrice, and Nightwing Shade are more powerful than whatever he can do is. He's got a Pacifism for our Blood Baron. Pretty happy about that, to be honest. See if he has a essence scatter of his own here. I certainly wouldn't mind if he did. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't love it, but if he did, then uh, that means that we're resolving two different Nightwing shades on him, and those should be pretty good versus him theoretically. Wow, he's looks like he's on the control plan as well. He's just locked down two two power creatures here. So let's run out. Nightwing Shade. This should benefit us as uh, the divination that we have, plus the uh, the bombs, the Sen Gear, and but particularly the Colossal Whale should be good against him. All right, there's Disperse. This could get a little sketchy here. I think I just want to hit him for four here because I'm pretty sure he's he's representing Celestial Flare here or maybe Opportunity. But I'd kind of like to use a Disperse to save my Nightwing Shade. I just want to have Density of Threats in hand here. Unfortunately, both of his removal spells prevented me from being able to, uh, to play around Celestial Flare. You take that and say go. Nothing. Well, that's interesting. He maybe maybe he thinks I have negate, which I'd much rather have. <laughs> yeah. So he just does nothing. Gonna pump it once. This is potentially incorrect for me to play this because um, he could have a sweeper like planar cleansing. 
But the reason why I don't think he has that is because he played claustrophobia and pacifism on my two kind of not really that great creatures. And I just didn't, I just don't think that he's going to run these two premium removal spells out on my, my random two, two. Uh, if he, if his plan is to sweep the board. All right, he's going to play a clone here of a Nightwing Shade, but <laughs> that's not going to be really what he wants to do here. I mean, I think you'd clone Death Gaze Cockatrice if you were going to do that. So we're gonna we're gonna just pound away here and uh, just start keeping the big pressure up now. He can't really block. Yeah, he just okay. So we picked up that game. Now, what did we see from him? Well, we saw some pretty nice removal. I think I actually want a duress versus him. I like the mind rot and the duress. I think they're both going to be pretty sweet, and I think I can cut. Well, there's a lot of things I could probably cut here, but. I think I'm going to cut a blood baron. Could have also cut the uh, sensory deprivation. It doesn't look like he's really aggressive, but. And you never quite know. And it's 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 rarely just like a, a bad magic card. It's just sometimes it's much, much better than it is. But it, it it's floor isn't that low. All right, that seems good. Probably just going to run the Seacoast Drake out there on turn two and then just mine rot him at an opportune time. Seacoast Drake should do good work versus him. So I could just mine rod him right away, but this gives him so many options. It's often much better to to wait till they've played out a few of their early drops. You know, their threes or their fours kind of get some lands and some stuff out of their hand, and then and then really get them so you can get their bomb or maybe you know you, I, the dream would be like to get an opportunity out of their hand or something along those lines. Having mine rod in your opener is pretty good. Drawing it late in the game when they're already down to either zero or one cards is is just misery. But that's why divination is so much better than mine rot because if you have it in your opener, you're pretty happy. You're going to be able to smooth out your draw, refill after you've kind of dumped your hand, or if you draw it late in the game, it's it's just one of the best things you can see. Mine rot less so. I normally like to use up my mana every turn, but it's not like I have anything else going on here anyway. Also, it's not like he has anything going on. What is what is up with this guy? Ooh, that's a good one. I really like drawing that one. Because now I can actually get an idea. Now there's that opportunity I wanted to get. Quicken... Shoot. So, <laughs> so what he's going to be able to do is when I mind rot him, he's going to uh, discard pacifism and just play Oromancer to get it back at some point. So let's, let's 
take a quick screenshot here. And I'm going to just take the opportunity for now. Because we know that we're going to want to get rid of that. And I'll attack him. And then hopefully we'll just draw something that we can uh, Yeah, we've actually got a lot of sweet options here. So he's going to fire off this Quicken to cycle it. And he's probably just going to play a Johnny's Chosen here. And we're just going to Doomblade it. I don't want to let him pacify. Ooh. Dawnstrike Paladin. Dawnstrike Paladin, I think we can just get away with sensory deprivation on it and kind of not carrying beyond that. So his hand right now is Oromancer, a Johnny's Chosen Pacifism Unknown card, because he played a Plains. So I think we probably Mind Rot him. We might still have to just wait a turn. Yeah, let's just wait one more turn. I don't think he's going to be able to, like, just dump his entire hand here or anything like that. He might get impatient. All right, so Plains still has an unknown card. Ah, oh, he's got an Archaeomancer now. Ugh, well, that's annoying. Because it's going to give him his uh, opportunity back. Well, that just sucks. I don't like that. Corpse all are not great here. I'm going to mine rod him now, though. He could, he's going to discard pacifism and something else. He can keep opportunity and, Arca and uh, Oromancer in his hand. We're going to get something else, though. All right, so we got rid of the Chosen, which is, which is okay. I mean, it's not really great, to be honest, because... We uh, we actually have an answer to that already. The obviously the opportunity is a much bigger issue, but unfortunately we can't really do much about that. I mean, we could hope that he plays two spells next turn, and then we can get it from his hand with the with the mind rot. But realistically, this guy's been super passive; just hasn't been doing anything. All right, so now we're way way behind. Sure. But we have a ton of draws, and we don't know what he's got in his hand. Ooh, there's a good one. Yeah, take that opportunity. So he's got Oromancer in hand. That's the only known card. And unfortunately, we didn't really hit here. And uh, so we're just battling. I mean, we're, we're chipping away at his life total, but we're basically just digging for a bomb. We're looking for a whale or, you know, even a Nightwing Shade would be fine here. I like our threat density. We've got a lot of options. If We, we don't really care about any big bombs he plays because we have three essentially removal spells in hand here. 
And even if we get one of our spells countered, we can just, or one of our bombs countered, we can just buy it back with the hauler. So things are looking okay for us. All right, here's his Oromancer, but he's not, I don't think he's going to actually fire off the, uh, the pacifism here. There's a bomb. Send your vampire. So we're going to have to do a little dance with this because now there's going to be a lot of things. But basically, he's going to pacify the send your vampire. Ooh. All right. We'll be right back. All right. So he's going to pacify or send your vampire. And then, uh, and then we're going to have to probably just disperse our guy or something along those lines. He's going to disperse our Kaomancer here. Well, I didn't want to do this, but there's no way that we can let him have a uh, another opportunity. We just can never survive that. So we, we'll take the, uh, I mean, calling this a two for one is probably a little bit ambitious, but you know, ultimately it ends up being like a five for one. So whatever, we have to do it. Now, if he plays a big bomb, we're kind of in trouble. All right, Angelic Wall, a little bit annoying, but probably won't do too much here. Um, I think I'm just going to disperse Send Gear Vampire and recast it. Make him have another answer. Still has two cards in his hand, even after all that, so. And we can now just sort of confidently cast it, because even if he runs a cancel or, or an essence scatter, we'll be able to get it back eventually. Um, I'm not going to bother bluffing any nonsense with the Seacoast Drake. I'm just going to ship. <clears throat> so we've got a threat, and it looks like he's got a claustrophobia. Yeah, we... we we might have to do what we might have to do. He's down to one card in hand here, and we actually have an opportunity here to uh, time ebb our own Sengir Vampire, but it's not a play I'd normally recommend, but I gotta say, is there anything we'd rather draw more next turn than another Sengir Vampire here? Even if it, like, if I could just discard time ebb? I'd probably take that deal. I mean, we're just at the mercy of the top of the deck, and I think that that's probably the best card we have. So let's do it. Send the turn back here. And I, I hate making that play, I won't lie. But like I said, if, if you just stopped the game and said, okay, discard time ebb, you draw a Send Gear Vampire next turn, I'd be like, yeah. I mean, at this point in the game, Send Gear Vampire is a, a game breaker and our opponent's flooded out a bit and I want to make sure we try to get as much pressure on as possible here. Ugh, this is getting grindy. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to draw Send Gear Vampire, but we're not going to play it because he's just going to get his pacifism back anyway. And so instead, we're just going to stare at each other for a while until I draw a negate. And then I'm going to play Send Gear Vampire, and then I'm going to negate his pacifism and hopefully kill him. And hopefully he doesn't draw anything too aggressive in the meantime. And uh, we can just grind. Been an interesting game, though. Lots of tricky plays. I played two of my, air quotes, removal spells on my own dude. And he's bought back a ton of stuff from his graveyard here. All right, there's an island. Say go. Probably don't need to play any more lands now. Probably didn't need to play that land, to be honest. Not worried about it coming from his deck, but still. Okay. All 
Uh, we can do this the other way. Now that we have two threats, he just has to answer both of them. Um, and we just basically hope that he can't. Uh, if he does pacify something, it should be the shade as it already can get bigger and every swamp I draw I can make it that much bigger so he's got to deal with that but he doesn't so that means he probably has some other thing in mind so now we're gonna start playing around celestial flare here by attacking with our seacoast drake gives up a little bit of damage on the ground but it's not that big of a deal so let's attack I think I want that blood baron He actually didn't block either, which is kind of interesting. And now we can pump the one that he doesn't block. All right, we got there. So we managed to outgrind the grinder there as uh, he certainly had a similar game plan to us of just getting more cards than us, but uh, we managed to get him. Um, interesting game for sure. We'll see you guys in the second round.